Hey, BookTube. I just saw um, Steve Donahue do a tag that I thought was funny. <clears throat> so, I wanted to do it too. So, this is the sex and literature tag. And since I don't know how literary I am, I like to pretend I am sometimes. Um... But this was originally done by Bookish, I guess. Um, and here are the questions. What is the first book you have read that comes close to crossing the line between literature slash adult fiction and pornography? Well, um, that would be probably... Naked Lunch. Um, I read this when I was in high school, and um, it, like, blew my mind. Like, I couldn't believe I was reading what I was reading. Like, um, a lot of it I thought I was going to get in trouble for. And probably if I got caught reading this at school, or if, like, the teachers, like, read it, I guess, um... I would have probably gotten to some kind of beef. But, like, honestly, and I'm looking at this right now, too. This is my um, Banned Books coffee mug. And it has all these books that were banned. Um, and a lot of them on here are were banned because of... Uh, like, obscenity, um, and stuff like that, so, um, that's kind of cool, I guess, yeah, so anyway, um, but the thing about Naked Lunch is the stuff in here, and I would actually like to hear what Steve thinks of this, because there's a part of me that would assume Steve would think it's pap. Because it's all, like, the cut-up method and um, all this other stuff. And, like, I've always wanted to know, like, what that book would have been like if it wasn't done like that. Like, if it would have been, like, really um, just awful. Um, and true, a lot of the reason why um, I was was drawn to it as I was reading it was because of the, um, the weird and the sex and stuff in it. But the thing with that book is, is that it's so bizarre that the sex doesn't feel wrong, if that makes sense. Like, it's so like, bonkers, that, like, you just go, oh, yes, well, this would definitely be the next thing someone would do here. Um, but, yeah, so let's go to the next question here. Um, what is a book you have read with a cringeworthy description um, or, or depiction or discussion of sex? Jesus Christ. Okay. Um, The long arm books. Um, I read one and then flipped through a couple others. And what I don't like about them is like it's all like you know, cowboys and um spitting tobacco and shooting motherfuckers and all this stuff. But then once the sex happens, it's like, oh, hello. Let me and it's just like, I'm like, that is not at all how that would go. Like, that would be, like, really, really awful and not like that. So, um, for some reason, that bothers me. Because, honestly, and, like, I know, like, I'll get some heat for this, but, like, nine times out of ten... Sex is a horribly disgusting act. Like, it doesn't 
Um, like, everyone who has done the thing, think about all the times that it was super romantic. And maybe that's what people want, but I don't think it's real. Um, I can think of way more times when awful, horrible things happened during or alluding to, you know what I'm saying? It's like, so whenever I'm reading something and then stuff gets all romantical, you know, um, I'm like, oh, this is fake. Like, this is like, it, it just doesn't sit with me. Like, it, I cringe like nobody's business. But I also cringe when people dance. So, I might not be the right guy to ask about this. Um, what is the most overrated book with a reputation for being sexy that you have read? Oof. Overrated book. Um, see, this is when we start talking about literature. Because I can think of a ton of books that um, should not have been sold. Or should not have been purchased, let's say. There's a B in here because I left the door open. So I'm freaking out. But like... Um, I guess it's pulp. I don't know. But, like, my mom used to read Daniel Steele like crazy. And um, I never understood it. And she said she would always skip the sex scenes. Like, she would just, like, once something would start happening, she would just turn three pages or something. And I don't understand why anyone would read after that. Um But yeah, um, Tropic of Cancer, um, that book feels more real than, um, a lot of books that I've read that deal with sex and stuff like that. But that book, um, it almost feels like, over the top, like, with the, the word choices and the dialogue, um, so I think that would be my pick. I think the reason why that book was as successful as it was, was just because of how dirty it was. <clears throat> and not because of the content, um, would be my guess. So that would be my pick on that one, I guess. Um, what is your favorite passage from a book? Um, about describing sex or a sexual situation. <sighs> um, this is weird because... I think um, one of the ones that I was not expecting, let's say, was um, The Sun Also Rises. And um, this is kind of like a big spoiler, so I don't know if I should even talk about it, but the book's like a gajillion years old, so suck it, I guess. But um, they have the sexual situations in there, but, um, he's impotent. So, um, I didn't really see that coming and, haha, <laughs> that was awful. Don't, don't do that. Um, but so that was kind of, um, <clears throat> probably an interesting thing that I, I didn't that I wasn't expecting. So that's Hemingway and Sun Also Rises. Um, this isn't really the same thing, but <clears throat> this, I was just talking about this book the other day, but um, if you don't know, like Breakfast of Champions, like um, there's all these like little drawings he does in it. But in this bit right here, he goes through and tells you how 
big and wide everyone's penis in town is. And it has a little, like, inch. So you can see how big an inch is. Um, it's just funny, you know? Like, um, oh, it just cracks me up. But, wait, what was the question again? Um, ah, so what I will say is this. Um, Women by Bukowski. Um... I feel like this is how a lot of it is. And it's not just here. Like, you could read, like, um, like Love is a Dog from Hell. That has a lot of stuff in it like that, too. But it's just real. Like, it's not flowery. It's not purple. It's just how it is, you know, and, but not in like a, like when you read that, you're not like, you don't read it going, Ooh, I need to self gratify myself now. If you know what I'm saying? Like, it's not like something like that. It's just real. It's like, it's real. It's dirty. It's ugly. A lot of the time it's, um, it is what it is, you know, and, um, like that, I appreciate that. If you're going to go that far, <clears throat> make it real. Whereas in Henry Miller's case, it seems like he tries way too hard to make it real and tries way too hard to make it ugly and dirty. And, um, it just sounds like bullshit. It sounds like a guy who's, never done those things fantasizing about how those things go. Whereas when Bukowski does it, it sounds like a guy who's done it, who constantly fails at it, who wants to make himself feel better, but knows he's not going to be able to. Does that make sense? It's just like, it's just, uh, I don't know, but yeah. So moving right along, what are some books names? that contain positive and frank depictions of sexual relationships. Hmm. See, when I was originally going to talk about this, I was going to bring up um, a couple books, but I feel like these would not work in this situation now. Like, I know that um, a lot of the um, lesbian pulp, like the Anne Bannon stuff in... Um, uh, since the eighties, I think they, she was able I'm trying to remember who else that they, they were able to go back and, um, put in the endings they wanted because back in the day, um, with lesbian fiction, um, the publishers wanted to publish it and the publishers wanted to put filthy pictures on the front, but, um, at the end, like something horrible had to happen to them as like a comeuppance for their depravity kind of thing. So in the eighties, like all the, I think the Bebo, um, Bebo Binker, Bebo Brinker books, um, she was able to put in the original endings that she wanted. Um, so that's kind of cool. Cause what I was going to do, like all the early Burroughs stuff, William Burroughs, like na like pre naked lunch. So like junkie and queer <clears throat> and, um, the hippos are boiled in their tanks. Um, that kind of stuff. Um, I think it, I think it depicts, um, LGBTQ people. Okay. Um, I know that like, that's like one of the big things was a, um, a relationship gone awry in the hippos, like not even a relationship, like someone not wanting the other one's advances kind of thing. So I could see how that could look bad. Um, and in, queer um 
that might come off like that too. I don't think it does though. But you never know because some people have like hot buttons that they get really upset about. But um, Burroughs was the first person I read who wrote openly about homosexuality and stuff like that. So whenever I think of... Um, at least to my knowledge that I've read. Um, but whenever I think of that kind of stuff, he's always the first person I go to. Um, Howell um, is probably like the Ginsburg. Like that's probably like a seminal work, you know. Um, but, you know, whatever. Um, but I don't know. I think that I think that's it. And then the last question is, um, what do you think the best way of depicting sex in literature and fiction? Um, I just like when it's real. Um, and if you don't know what I mean by that, then um, then you don't know. Like I I can't like explain it. Um, any better than that. Um, but, you know, it's always awkward. Um, it's never as um, fancy and smooth as it is. Like, usually there's some laughter um, and some ridiculousness. Somebody usually gets hurt. Um, like hits their eye on the corner of a nightstand or um, part of a shelf falls down on top of them. Um, you know, typical stuff. Um, so, but I, I was thinking about it and in watching Steve's video, Steve was saying how um, it never furthers the plot. And so I'm trying to think if there's a book out there where sex actually furthers the plot like if um the dude or the chick or the two dudes or whatever like one of them is like like the MacGuffin or um like there's there's some reason why you would have to have sex with this person to get to the next stage um or something like that if you know of anything like that, um, leave it in the comments down below, because that would be um, interesting, I guess. So, anyway, um, tag people who I think could handle it. Um, I think everyone could handle it. We're all adults here, except for the people who aren't. Um, so, if you're an adult, I think you can handle this. So, let me know down below what you think, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.